Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Once again, Father, we rejoice in you tonight. No one come before you except your spirit draws them. No one approaches your throne except your spirit ooze them. Once again, Father, you have steered my heart. You've placed your word upon my lips to speak as your oracle. May I once again speak, O oh God, with the pain of the ready writer. May my mouth bring forth your heart desire. May my mouth speak forth, O oh God, your counsel. May there be a release tonight, O oh God, of your eternal desire and intent, O oh God, within the hearts of those whom you have summoned to listen to, hearken to this oracle. I pray tonight, O oh God, that tonight that there will be a fulfillment of your word within the hearts of your people. Lord, that as we engage the atmosphere, that there will be a release, O oh God, yes, of words that will encourage, that will empower, that will build, words that will fortify and reinforce our faith, words that will encourage us to continue to look unto you tonight, our King and our Lord. May I speak, O oh God, words that will bring forth healing, deliverance, that will bring direction, instruction, words that will edify, words, O oh God, that will encourage, yet words that will correct, that will rebuke. I thank you tonight. I offer myself, my body to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. May I become a conduit for you. May in this moment, O oh God, <clears throat> reveal your eternal intent, O oh God. May your kingdom come in all facets and dimension. May you be glorified. Oh, we honor you. <clears throat> we bless your name tonight. We celebrate you. What a day we live in. A day of the unveiling of Christ. That means the crisis of time. Lord, we have come to magnify and amplify your desire, your heartbeat for this new day. That we will, oh God, once again become that company of men and women whom you have found worthy to stand with you even amidst the fire. That we will not, oh God, yes, go down, oh God, to Thessalonica, neither are we going to go down to Emmaus. But our hearts will be set on a journey to see the appearance of your king and your kingdom within the affairs of men. We bless you tonight. Take your place and be glorified. May you be exalted. May you, O oh God, be glorified. May truth find us. May your truth locate us. And allocate to us what we need to journey, O oh God, even in this challenging times. You said these are days, yes, where the hearts of men are failing them. Yet you've given us the antidote to know how to survive in times like this. So, Father, tonight we come to hear, to listen, to respond. Even as you re-instruct us. Thank you, O God, that we will not speak from the minds of men. <clears throat> we will not speak of what we've seen in the natural. He said, while we look not to the things that are seen, there are enough things to see to distract us, to buffet us, to cause our hearts to be anxious, to cause us to give up. But once again, we pray for the calibration of our sight so we can see what men are not seeing. Hallelujah. 
so we can hear what men can hear. Thank you, Lord, that we are of the company of them who transverse the dimensions of the Spirit. Hence, we know, yes, what you are doing, what you are saying, regardless of the state or the condition of our lives. That our life is not determined by our physical condition. So, Father, tonight we turn to you. We turn to Christ. You say, turn to me and be saved. We look unto you, our rock, our foundation. Christ, you have become the very anchor of our faith. Yes. And this is the hope we have. That we can call upon you. That in the days of Enos, men began to call upon the name of the Lord. For that name is a strong tower. Tonight, once again, we are asked in this atmosphere, as I bring forth your word, O God, as I release your word into the realm, as your word penetrate, O God, yes, the atmosphere, as your word, O God, yes, continue to journey in the spirit. And of course, there is no distance when it comes to the operations of your word. That people in America, in Canada, in Australia, in different parts of Africa, oh God. Yes, in the Caribbeans, where, wherever people are tuning to us from the East, wherever, oh God, there are crises that this word is relevant to, that as we speak, your word, oh God, will unleash a spirit that will bring forth healing, deliverance, transformation, restoration. That we hang on to the hope of your word. Hallelujah. Tonight, we do not limit you. Because indeed, you are the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was it God. And the word himself is God. The same word you spoke forth is you in action. Thank you tonight. That your word will minister life to us. That your word will bring hope to us. That your word will recalibrate our sight. Will readjust our perceptions and perspective. That once again, as I speak for your word, oh God, that your people will be more aligned to your will and counsels and purposes. Lord, that every forgiveness will begin to give way. Every uncertainty will begin to give way. Every spirit of doubt will begin to give way. Every spirit of confusion will begin to give way. That your word tonight, oh God, will bring forth a new order of people thank you as you speak to us about the days of the end may we indeed become that company of men and women who are well fortified with that which oh god you have already given thank you lord that as you continue to invite us to your table to eat may our eyes of understanding be open yes as you broke the bread you said their eyes were open. May our eyes be open. Tonight we pray that this will not just be some ordinary words. This will not just be another words of men. This will not just be another rhetoric. No, this is the ministry of your word. The word grew and prevail. May your word grow and prevail over every prevailing situations and circumstance. I thank you tonight. I honor you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Friends, if you're joining me tonight, welcome. <laughs> this is the potter's gate. You know what that means? This is the place where the word of God, hallelujah, gains inroad and entrance into the space of men. Potter's gate is a place where we bridge, amen, the spiritual and the natural. It's a place where we connect that which is spiritual into the human space. Is a place where earlier uh, the heart of God becomes revealed and manifest. We are, yes, the gate of heaven. We are the door, the entrance of the intentions of God into the human space. This is what portals gate. We're a portal. In case you don't know what God is doing, in case you don't understand, amen, what is going on about life, when you tune into Porter's gate, you gain perspective. We are the doorway. They said to Daniel, from the day you seek to understand and began to pray, we have dispatched, hallelujah, Gabriel, hallelujah. 
We connect with Gabriel. We connect with the Spirit of God. We connect with angelic activity. No matter what we face, no matter what, amen, is happening within our realm, within our space, there's a dimension of a life that we connect to that cannot be buffeted, that cannot be touched, that cannot be stopped, cannot be hindered. I mean, the king of glory was killed. They arrested him. They slapped him. They spat on him. They gave him a, a, a torn, you understand, a crown of thorns. He sweat blood. Everything humanly that can happen to people happen to our Lord. Yet it does not, that did not change his kingship. Hallelujah. What a, what a way to start tonight. What a note to start on. That everything you may be going through, hallelujah, does not stop what you carry on the inside. Should not affect, in fact, the fact that you carry something means that all hell is going to be loose against you. But that doesn't mean that, amen. The hand of heaven is not upon you. That doesn't mean that you are not God's spokesman. There's a false gospel that we have accepted and we have continued to, you know, uh, uh, you know, to pedal. That says, if you are challenged, if you are buffeted, if you're going through pain and you're going through high water and you, you know, going through whatever people are going through, that you don't have faith. Or, uh, well, maybe you've done something. Well, I beg to differ. And of course, the scripture, amen, differs to that perspective the bible says though the righteous may fall seven times they didn't say the righteous that fall into sin the bible said though the righteous may fall seven times you know the word seven it means perfection so your your fall must be perfect must be perfect we the righteous needs to fall you know why so that the righteous will come to a point and a place where he or she knows that it's not by might it's not by power hallelujah but by the Spirit of God. This is the day of the Spirit. This is the day where we must live via the Spirit. To live via the Spirit, we have to be people of the Word. Not just some, you know, religious rhetorics and some, you know, a, a ceremonial declaration. We have to, the Word must be incarnate. The word, hallelujah, must be incarnate. The word must become flesh and it must dwell among our situations and circumstances. And the word became flesh and dwell among them. Hallelujah. So I'm encouraging us tonight as we start on this note. I'm believing God that the few things that I want to bring to your attention, you know, will, will, will resonate with your heart. I believe that this, 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 this day that heaven has ushered into that I call days of great crisis. I mean, I'm sure by now you know all the crises that I have been through. And the Lord is giving me perspective. If you're going to be a priest, if you're going to represent the things of God, well, you have to go beyond just talking about it. I'm going to plunge you into that situation so that you become a faithful priest. You know, you can feel, amen. You know how to, you know, talk to people, how to counsel people. I mean, yeah, so God will take us through whatever he needs to take us through. After all, he is the Lord. He's not just our Savior. He's our Lord, meaning that he's sovereign. So when the day of the sovereign hand of God, amen, as God continues to shake everything that can be shaken, yes, he's also manifesting his sovereignty. If you look at the scripture that is scrolling down, you know, at the screen, it says we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. That means the values of that kingdom will be tested in our life. Everything, amen, that can be tested will be tested. So it is not a strange thing that you're going through some challenge, that you're going through some, you know, difficulty, that you're going through some painful period. No, all of that is to prepare you to receive a kingdom. Hallelujah. And this is the reason why they're speaking to us about keeping our eyes in this season focus on the Lord you know religion say okay we can go to church but you don't have to be focused on Christ you, you can do all the things that everybody does and on Sunday you can become you know a sister and become a nice brother but you don't need to be focused on the Lord no 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 they are bringing us to the point where everything in our life amen must lead us to the point where we are perpetually focused on Christ. 
And I keep saying it, that this is not just some charismatic idea of where we're looking unto Jesus. No. This is the all mark, amen, of our prophetic mandate, of our, you know, you know our assignment as, you know, as, as kingdom representative, as Christ representative. Our, our attention, amen, yes, must be on him in this last day because that's the only way we can survive and be victorious. So once again tonight, I'm going to be just, you know, dropping one or two points that I, I felt the Lord has dropped in my heart. In fact, some of the things that we began to look into a, a few days ago, two days ago, thereabout, we didn't finish them. But let's let's just see what the Lord, amen, is saying to us. Okay? Yeah. We, the days we're living are days, you know, shrouded with destruction. And most, many of this destruction has to do with things that concerns our life. And that's why, amen, those distractions, you know, are, you know, are, are, you know, are manifesting in, 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 in line of anxiety. Many of the distractions are becoming issues of anxieties in our life. And the, the, the scripture warns us, amen, to be careful lest our heart be captured by dissipation. That the day of the Lord, amen, catches on us, amen, on our ways, unprepared. The Bible says we must be like the watchmen, we must be like those, amen, who watch, we must be like the servants who watch. Because we don't know the time or the hour. That is not just, amen, some religious idea of seeking to escape, no. He is coming for a glorious church, have you read that? Christ is coming for a glorious church and they define what that means. They say a glorious church is a church without spots, without wrinkle and without blemish. A glorious church is a church without spots, without wrinkle and without blemish. These are things that, you know, humanly we will overlook. Many people will overlook a spot. Many will overlook a wrinkle. Many will overlook a blemish. But there are certain places that if you're going to go, there are certain invitations, hallelujah, that amen, you are given that you cannot afford to have a spot, a wrinkle, and a blemish. Because, amen, they look into all those areas. Yes. Have you been to certain, you know, certain occasion where, you know, the dress code is immaculate, the dress code, I mean, <laughs> you cannot just go there and just look anyhow, just, you know, appear. They say, friend, what are you doing here? Who invited you? What are you doing here? Who invited you? Did you not get the memo? Were you not told? Amen. Did you, did you not get the dress code? Hallelujah. Excuse me. They said, did you not get the dress code? How did you get here with, you know, without the right attire? Friends, if we're going to enter into the next order, into the next phase of heaven's intention, we have to have the right, amen, code of dressing. And that code of dressing is a value system, is a mindset, is a belief system, hallelujah, is a quality of faith, amen, is a character life, amen. And all of this must come through, amen, yes, a period, a seasons of refinement, So I invite you once again, friends, to sit down and reappraise what the Lord is doing in this season. This is not about, you know, the world trying to kill you. This is not about, you know, you falling under the pressures of the world. No, this is about you being tested. This is about you, yes, being tested. If you're going to stand and you're going to represent God's intention, God's counsel, if you're going to carry the things of God, if you're going to be one of them that are going to be used to carry the intentions of God in this end of days, you will be tested. That is the general standard of life. Alright? Before anything all right, gets, to, it gets to the market, gets to consumers, they are tested. Amen. They are tested. 
before the wine amen that Jesus made was served to the people of the day they took it first to the master of ceremony when he drank the wine I can imagine he say whoa what kind of a wine is this this wine is far better than the one we've been drinking the, I mean the master of ceremony he said no no the guy has to speak out he said what how why would you why should you keep the best for last nobody keeps the best for last you bring the best first when everybody have drunk you know then you bring the one that is not how come you've kept the best for last we are the best that God is keeping for this end of days you are the best that God is keeping but for this best to manifest you will have to go through a season a period of dryness the bible says they ran they ran out of they ran out of wine it was a first marriage in Cana of Galilee it was unprecedented the miracle was unprecedented Jesus was in the house the mother was in the house the marriage ceremony amen, continued. The man was sitting looking. In the midst of jubilation and all of that, they ran out of wine. The marriage has not even entered the first day. They already ran out of steam. They ran out of vision. They ran out of direction. It was God, amen, speaking prophetically. Remember, when the season of what? Prophetic metaphor. That was a prophetic metaphor. It wasn't just about a story of, you know, a, a wedding <laughs> in King of Galilee. The story is beyond just Jesus turning water into wine. The story is about, a man, yes, a people that he wants to use, a church that he wants to bring to the end of themselves, to the end of their strength, to the end of their own idea, to the end of their own wisdom. I hope you understand that marriage is not a man's idea. It's God's idea. Anything we want to do, I want to do it by our own might, by our own strength, by our own ability, by our own capability. Amen. It's going to hit the rock. They're coming to an end. The Bible says they ran out of wine. In the midst of all of that, they ran out of wine. Thank God for a woman who knew what to do. He said, well, <laughs> I tell you the answer. You got to go to Jesus. He's there sitting. Go to him. It can turn things around. <laughs> because they didn't invite him, so they were ashamed. They, they couldn't go, so they actually pushed Jesus, Jesus' mother. They say, You go ask him for us, please. <laughs> you go, you go, you go ask him. Have you been in a situation where people are feeling cocky and feeling proud? They think they're in charge, they think they're in control. You think you know. <laughs> well. Where we're in the day where everything, hallelujah, we think we know, we think we have, amen, is hitting rock bottom. This is not, amen, for to destroy us. This is God saying that we live in a fallen world. And in a fallen world, fallen ideas cannot, hallelujah, maintain you. Fallen belief system cannot keep you. We have to understand and come to the point and realization of why we say we are connected to God. We are connected to Christ. If indeed we are connected to Christ, then the values that drives our life should reflect the value of him that we are connected to. Amen. A minute before I began, you know, curating my message for tonight, the things that I've just said now were not were not there. But God knew how He wants His word amen, to pan out the direction. You see, I'm just basically a spokesman. You understand? I'm just a channel for Him amen, to speak. The issue of you know marriage of uh, wedding of King of Galilee was not in my note. 
But God is speaking to us. Let those who have the ears hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. We're in a time where God wants us to come back, amen, to value and appreciate who Christ is. Jesus was in the house, but they, don't, they, 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 they didn't recognize him. They didn't know him. Look at, look at Jerusalem. Jerusalem is on fire today. I mean, Israel is on fire today. That is the cradle of Christianity. The very people, the very nation, the very tribe that claim that we are the custodian of, of Christ. We, brought, we, we, we produce Christ, amen, Jesus to, for the world. Look at their relationship with Christ. It's almost zero. But God will continue to deal with us and engage our life until we come to our knees. Listen, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. That is not some declaration of salvation. That's a declaration of redemption. Nations will bow. Cities will bow. Individuals will bow. Marriages, homes will bow. Everyone will come. Young and old will come to know that he is Lord. Let's not kid ourselves. You will lose everything, amen, that you can lose for the redemption of your soul. If you want Christ, you will say, take it all. All I want is Jesus. And for those who want Jesus but want something else, we'll have to make a choice. You want to grab Jesus, you want to, uh, sorry, you've got to make a choice. They're bringing us to that point. It is the manifestations of what is called the end of days. We can see it. I don't need to define what that means even to an unbeliever. That we are in the days of the end. In the days of the end, earlier, two things are happening concurrently. There is instability in the natural, in the physical realm. But those who are tracking, who are walking, amen, who are seeking his appearance, are having peace. Peace within crisis. Peace among crises. Peace within, amen, the anxieties of life. Yes. You're going to be seeing these two kind of people emerging. You'll be wondering, but we're going through the same thing. How come, how come you have peace? How come you have joy? How come you have rest? It's not that person. It is what that person earlier has come to accept and believe. It is the quality of faith that person is pressing into. Yes? Yes? Hello? When the Lord began to judge the nation of Israel, all the prophets that God used, amen, to proclaim and to declare those things, excuse me, were they, were they exonerated? Were they isolated? Amen? Were, you know, were, were they insulated from those problems? No, they were not. Many of them, amen, face, amen, the brunt of the same judgment they proclaim. Is it Jeremiah? Is it Isaiah? Tell me that prophet that did not go through, amen. Yes, crisis, pain. We saw Elijah, amen, running from, from Brook to, to Zarephath, amen, seeking survival. But the Lord was guiding him. Yes. So don't think that you will be, you know, you will be given some kind of a, you know, a, 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 a special. No, no, no. In the midst of that situation, God will be protecting you. I told you. Daniel stood his ground. I'm not going to bow, O king. They said, okay, the word is anyone who refused to bow will be thrown to, into the lion's den. Go ahead, make my day. How do you think God was going to reveal his glory? How do you think the world, amen, will come to the knowledge? I'm sure by now you know that the gospel we preach is no longer enough for the world, amen, to come to believe and accept that indeed the God that we serve is the true God. No, our life must now become, amen, yes, the very gospel. Our life must become the, the, the handwriting of God. Our life must become what they can see. You are the epistle, the living epistle, known and read of men. You just go and tell people Jesus is Lord. They'll say, we've heard that before. 
But when your life is preaching Jesus is Lord, they will put their hand on their head and say, yes, I want him because I can see. The woman at the well, <laughs> when she ran back to the town and told them what she had encountered, they knew her. They knew who she was. What did they do? They followed her. All the men followed her because most of those men are, have sampled that woman. So, so they knew what she was talking about. They followed her to come and meet the real man. Can the nation be saving the day? Yes. By the encounter of certain individuals. So we have to begin to understand what God wants to do with our life in this season. God is not going to use amen, some scavenger. God is not going to use anything. He's going to use a company of them who have yielded, surrendered themselves to his process, to his dealing. So that through their life, amen, yes, their, their life, amen, becomes a mirror. Have you ever... Try to look at yourself, amen, in a dirty mirror. How many of us, before we look at the mirror, we, 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 we do, we first clean the mirror, right? Why do you first clean the mirror? <laughs> Why don't you just look at yourself with the dirty mirror? Everything is dirty. No, 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 no. Because you know to get the best out of the mirror, it has to be what? It has to be clean, sparkling clean. Crystal clear. That's just what the Lord is doing with our life. I just want to, you know, bring you to terms with some messages, some, some scriptures that we've been looking at. You know, hopefully that will just awaken your understanding again. Then we'll, we'll, we'll look at one or two things and I'll be done tonight. Tonight, I just quickly want to encourage you then, you know, I, I, I'm done. Okay, let, let's, let's look at uh, uh, this scripture first. Let's look at this, Luke 21, 20 says, But when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you, amen, you, you will know that our desolation is near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let those in the city get out and let those in the country stay out of the city. Verse, 20, verse 22, that's where I'm going. For these are the days of vengeance to fulfill what has been written. We've seen that already panning out. If you don't believe that Jerusalem is surrounded, okay, in the next few days you're going to be seeing that happening. Let's read on. I, I'm just connecting, amen, you know, the nature of the season. We are, we are in a prophetic season. But when we talk about the prophetic, it's important that we understand it, understand it, amen, from all the context. You see, the prophetic is not an isolation, it's not an isolate, isolated message. Let me, let me just quickly, you know, uh, uh, let, let, me, let me expand a bit on this point that I've just made. The prophetic is not just about one event. Whenever God is ready to bring forth, amen, a, a fulfillment of his prophetic desire and his intention, particularly, let me, let, let me rephrase this. When a time comes where God, amen, God's word is about to come into manifestation in terms of God's prophetic timeline, all right, there are events that will begin to pan out, that will begin to take shape, that will begin to arrange, amen, yes, they, if you will, the 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 cocoon or the womb that will bring forth that thing. And one of the things I remember saying to us, you know, some time back, is that we are in a day, we are in a period of the fulfillment, all right, of God's prophetic counsel. Now, if that is true, then we have to understand the nature or the kind of people we ought to be because you see once God's prophetic you see God's prophetic intention is like when a woman is pregnant and she's about to give birth all right that period that season that condition of you know are you know trying to give birth amen steers all kinds of emotions steers all kinds of activity everybody must be on their on, you know on on their on their feet 
people who are who have issues who have you know um, you know a, a relation who have something to do with that person with that you know delivery you you, you see them everybody's up and doing nobody for drugs because something is about a man yes, to be brought for a child is about to be born Oftentimes, our greatest period of crisis is a time, amen, of the birthing of God's prophetic intention. Look at Jesus when Jesus was about to be born. Look at, amen, the period where, you know, Moses was about to be born. Whenever God's, amen, in, you know, prophetic desire, whenever God's, you know, counsel is about to, to make landfall, is about to, you know, come into fruition, you begin to see all kinds of reactions, and if you don't have an understanding that this is that that has been written, amen. Yes, you will develop a wrong, you know, a, a response system, which of course is what the enemy wants. Many people have aborted, amen, God's prophetic intention for their life, for their family, for their community, because they are they are unable to read, amen. Yes, the times, the seasons, they are unable to understand, amen, what 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 they should do. Rather than, you know, running like headless chicken, amen, you need to become, you need to position yourself in a state where or, uh, you, you know how to engage. That's, that's, that's the problem with many of us. We don't know how to deal with the issues of life. In fact, what I'm saying right now may just lead me to the to some points that I've highlighted. I'm not sure if I could just quickly, yes, let's just quickly look at this. I say life is becoming, all right. I just have some point here. Let's, let's quickly look at it. Life is becoming increasingly overwhelming and unbearable. Now, if I stop there, you would have like, oh yeah, yeah, we can, we all can relate with that. But the reason the reason why life is becoming increasingly over you know overwhelming and overbearable, all right, is because something Emma is about to be manifest. Something that is not of this world, something that, amen, yes, is not from this realm, is about to come into, amen, into manifestation. Life is becoming increasingly, you know, unbearable and overwhelming. Even for those whom we once stocks had everything figured out. Have you ever met, you know, certain people that is like, <laughs> they, they, they have figured everything out. It's like their life is like, we know what is going on. We, you know, we're in charge. Every time you talk to them, it's like, yes, they, they always have the right word. They always, you know, they, they, they always have something. They, you know, you, you like, how do you, how do you? How do you get things right? <laughs> it's like, uh, but I'm not living in sin. What's going on in my life? No, no, no. Even for those people that we thought, that you thought, amen, had everything figured out, had everything under control, they themselves are getting to the point where they are feeling the pain. Nobody is going to escape this current shaking. Because this is not a shaking from the devil. It's a shaking from the Lord. To remove the things that can be shaken out of our life. That's the purpose. That's what Hebrews 12 tells us. All right, The things that can be shaken. Because the things can be sh that can be shaken will cause casualty. Will cause, amen, yes, problem. I mean, who wants to enter a car, amen, that is unstable? That, you know, that is not, you know, uh, uh, roadworthy or, you know, certain parts. There's a technical, you know, issue. And, okay, yeah, let, uh, let's just fit it. Let's, let's, just, let's just get into the car we're traveling. No, when you want to travel, you want to be sure that that car, amen, is at its best. You want to be sure that the engine, all right, yes, is serviced. Everything about that car is intact. There are no loose bolts. Only in the church I've realized that everything will just um, we are presume we and we are okay lay on hallelujah the Lord is the, the blood of Jesus <laughs> this one pleading the blood is not gonna do this one we need hallelujah yes the skill of the spirit which is a manifestation of a prophetic spirit we need understanding wisdom shall be the stability of thy time my people perish for lack of knowledge. We need to invest, hallelujah, into what I call divine knowledge. Not the world, not the knowledge of AI. As much as we need that, 
In fact, you're going to be realizing one of the things I've said, you know, that, you know, that I, I, I said in some, one of the notes that I'm writing is that even AI that we think or uh, will just allow assist us because the, one of the things people are saying about AI, AI is going to allow us to have enough time because you can just ask, you know, chat GPT to do X, Y, Z for you. It gives you the answer. Listen, you think you're going to have time. You're never going to have enough time. Because the system of the world has, has so, you know, made it that you must be busy. You must continue to build pyramid. You must continue to, you know, yes, you know, be doing something. You must continue to construct. You must continue, you understand, in the plantation. To do what? To hinder you from going yonder to worship God. It's a battle of worship. It's a battle of who we're going to worship. So don't be don't be don't be disillusioned. Excuse me. Don't be deluded that uh, AI is gonna you know uh, solve. No, AI will never be able to solve human problem because the problem of man is a problem of the fallen nature. <laughs> is a problem of the fallen nature. The only one that can give us rest. And give us time to do what matters is when we come to Christ. It is Christ that will help us to reparatize our life. And that's what he wants to do. That's why he said to matter. Why, why, why are you busy doing things that really don't matter? You, you, you're not getting this thing. I'm in the house and you're running like a headless chicken. And you're complaining about your sister. That she's not, she's not assisting you. Mat, matter. You don't understand priority. There's this conference here. There's that program there. You know, the, the entire in, you know world of internet is inundated with all kinds of AI that can do this, AI that can do that. I mean, everybody's trying to sell you something. Everybody suddenly has become, you know, a master. Everybody's running, you know, a master class. Suddenly, everybody has become, you know, the guru. Come on! Who are we fooling? Let him who boasts boast in this that you know me. That little understanding or revelation we think we have about Jesus is not going to be enough in this end of days. You have to encounter him. You have to follow him and leave things behind. Follow him, amen, to the mountain of transfiguration. Life is becoming increasingly overwhelming and unbearable even for those we thought had everything under under control the truth is that life was never intended to be lived outside of god's presence when the lord dropped this in my spray suddenly there's an awakening in my spirit you were never designed to live your life by your skill by your educational knowledge by your ability you think you can survive or by the qualification you have you think it's your ability that will allow you to be able to handle things and no you sorry you've missed something you've left jesus behind you have to go back <laughs> is the driver or else life is going to be unbearable god did not design life for man hallelujah yes to be autonomous he gave man a will a spirit yes but guess what he also want man to depend on him. That's why when Jesus came on earth, he taught us how to pray. Teach, you know, he, he says, you know, ask God to give us our daily, daily bread. That's not just about survival. That is about total dependence on him. Unfortunately, that's a, that's a strange gospel being preached. The, the gospel we have heard is, you know, let's get all we can get so we can be self-independent. No, no. God never wants us to live outside his presence. That is why the judgment in the garden, listen to this. The judgment in the garden is that man was, man and his wife were cast out of the presence of God. The restoration that we must be preaching is how man can, amen, be restored back to that garden. Because that's the place of rest. And it's called paradise. In paradise, you don't sweat. Outside the garden, they sweat. Life outside the garden, hallelujah, is turmoil. 
It's overwhelming. It's painful. It's a jungle out there outside the garden, friends. You think you've got everything under control. You will see somebody who's going to outsmart you. <laughs> you think, oh, yeah, I'm, in con I'm in control. Huh? They will outdo you. Some people, they want to compete with Satan. I say, oh, and you think you're going to win? No, no. He will beat you. In fact, that is what he wants. Come out. He will drag you out. It will drag you, it will drag you outside the presence of God. <laughs> and then it will give you good hiding. Give you good one. You never, you don't want to fight the devil outside the presence of God. Because you will never win. You will never win. Let me repeat again. You will never win. Not even Jesus attempted to fight the devil outside the outside the will of his father. Everything Jesus did when he was amen, responding back to you know back to the devil was it is written. The friends, I'm calling you back, amen, to the place where your eyes, your mind, your desire, your attention must be refocused back on Christ. He is the word. Jesus said it is written. It is written. It is written. It is written. He didn't have to use his, his, his skill, his ability, you know, some knowledge. He, you know, he, he referred the devil back to the word of God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written, you will worship the Lord. Only him you will worship. It is written. When you get to the point where you've been pulled away from God's word, <laughs> They've systematically, yes, more work. I don't know how people survive. If you have three children like me, and you are not committed to those children, and you are doing, you know, your normal, you're just living life, you know, go to work, come back. How, how are you going to survive? Only God in this last day can really help us to maintain the values of true manhood or the value of true womanhood because the system that we are that we are dealing with amen yes is a system that is anti home anti marriage anti manhood anti womanhood this system wants to destroy your entire life and you have not even begun to deal with real issue you're just dealing with i don't have time <laughs> how are you going to survive the point that I'm making through this statement is that life was not designed to be lived outside of God's presence. We saw the consequence of living outside of God's presence. When Adam and Eve, hallelujah, abdicated their position, their responsibility, when they chose to listen to the voice of the, of the devil, when they chose to rebel against God, we saw how their life cascaded into, into hell and destruction. They gave birth to to children after their kind not after the they were created in the image of God but when they began to give birth they were given birth after their own kind after their fallen nature after their suke after their soul after their own ability by strength shall no man prevail are you tracking with me are we on the same page tonight I'm just trying to help us to understand some things I said unfortunately this principle has not changed. Which principle am I talking about? The principle, amen, of living either within the presence of God or outside the presence of God. When you live outside the garden, you live outside, amen, an effective devotional life. You live outside, amen, a committed, you understand, spirit to spirit relationship with God. You live outside the spirit. You're living in the flesh. You say, what does it mean to live in the flesh? To live in the flesh, amen, is to put yourself first and put Jesus second. To live in the flesh, to live in the flesh is to project I. If it's all about you, <laughs> sorry. Because there's a gospel that has been preached. It has to be about you. The gospel is around you, around you, you. No, the gospel was never designed to be around us. It's hallelujah. The gospel was designed to glorify, to exalt Christ. They say, if I be exalted, 
It is in that exaltation that men are drawn to him. But the gospel that says, no, elevate yourself. That's the gospel of Lucifer. He wants to exalt himself above the hill of the Lord, above the stars of God, above the mountain of God. They say, no, you will be cast down. That's the principle I'm talking about. Anyone who rejects the value and the standard of God in any field will face the same reality as Adam and Eve. Trying to manage life, amen, without the direct involvement of the Lord is the most challenging thing to do. In fact, it is just not, it's not just the most challenging, it's impossible to try to live life successfully outside the direct instruction, outside the direct involvement of God. I'm not talking about you trying to go out and you just do those, you know, append this prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this morning. I'm going out. Please watch over me. Protect me. You know you're kidding yourself. You've got to understand that we live in a fallen world. What does that mean? It means that your entire value system, including how you interact with life, cannot and must not depend on the wisdom of this world. That is eating from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It will look nice. It will taste nice. But alas, it's going to create reje rejection, rebellion, and of course regret at the end of the day. The system of this world is a crumbling one. It's cascading. It's falling apart. And this is the reason why those, amen, who are the M of affairs, they are, they are consulting all kinds of demonic, satanic spirit. You would think, oh, we live in a secular world. There's nothing like a secular world. There is one world, amen, controlled by two systems. The system of God or the system of the devil. Don't let anybody lie to you. Well, it's just a secular idea. What? What's a secular idea? That thing they call a secular idea. There's a powerful demonic spirit. Yes, behind it. And makes everything look as if, well, it's just natural. No. No. God has created two worlds. Amen. The, the spiritual world and the natural world. Where you come into an office and everything is looking like, Wow. Because somebody dressed in nice suit and is and that person wears a nice you know you know gold you know wristwatch and every everybody's speaking you know nice and everybody's you know cordial and 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 there's courtesy and there's everything and you think wow this is just so nice <laughs> you've been deceived behind all of those protocols and whatever there are powerful spirit behind them yes. We go to school. We get to be polished. We know what to do. We know to, how to engage. That's why I keep saying, those of us, amen, who, those of you who are in the marketplace, you've got to understand that that is, a, amen, a battleground. The marketplace is about the battle of souls. The devil is not just about buying and selling. It's about buying the souls of men. The book of Revelation told us that. Babylon trades, amen, in the souls of men. Not just in yarns, not just in purples, not just in sheep, not just, you know, in, 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 in crops and agriculture and, you know, in some idea. Babylon trades in the souls of men. And you're just there thinking. That's why if you don't have kingdom values and you think well, yes, you're in control, you're in charge because you have some, you know, powerful position. You, you are in some leadership. No, you try to do anything that, that goes against the values or the standard of that company. Or you try to promote Jesus. See how they will quickly bring you down. The challenge of the people of God in the land of Egypt was still kept at bay until they said we want to go worship God. <laughs> until that is why I want to encourage those of you 
Amen. Maybe you're listening to me. You, God has blessed you in some areas. No, you've got to start to invest. You understand? Yes, in what we call kingdom business. Doing things in the values and the standard of God. Because listen, the world that is out there wants to use his power, his system, his wisdom, his knowledge, his ability to crush that which represents Christ. That's why they say, that, listen, when they talk about the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast is just basically designed for one single people, Christians. It is to hinder Christians. Somebody who is not born again, what's, what, what's that person's fear about the mark or no mark? The person doesn't even know if it is a mark. It is you who recognize that thing as the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast, all right, is to put a pressure on those who claim to know God. Well, we'll see how you're going to buy and sell. <laughs> we'll see how you're going to survive. The issue of survival has kept a lot of people amen, in the place, in the state of compromise. Let's read on. Luke. Okay, let me just jump to Luke because I need to begin to round up. Maybe tomorrow we'll then continue. Luke 21. Let's look at Luke 21 from verse 33. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. That's a powerful statement. My words, Jesus says, will never pass away. In other words, the words of Christ, they are authority. If the Lord tarries in 2060, we're still in 2060 if the Lord tarries, the word of God, amen, will still be relevant and that word will still be making inroad and impact within the affairs of men. No matter how futuristic the world looks, no matter how men may be living on earth, the word of God, amen, is life. The Bible says the world is sustained by the word of his power. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a stroke of his word will go unfulfilled. Therefore, watch yourself. That's where we are going. So don't think, oh, we live in the 21st century. Suddenly, the word of God becomes a cake. The word of God becomes, oh, well, you know, uh, that, 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 we, we used to, we used to listen to that word back in the days. Now we've become modernized. Now we live in the world of AI. You're a fool. <laughs> <laughs> Open your eyes and memorize. The word of God is not subject to human time. It's not subject to human technology. The word of God is not captured nor limited by 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 who is buying what. Amen. By the disruptions in the marketplace. The word of God is not concerned, all right, that, you know, a company is buying another company or you're losing your job. No, there is a mandate, there's a prophetic mandate that is dangling over your life that they have called you to fulfill. And if you're not working in that reality, listen, when the shaking gets to you, you will think your world is collapsing. And in fact, your world will be collapsing. But in the midst of that collapse is the emergence of the real world. Watch yourself. Hello, friends. Look at the scripture. Read it. Luke 21, 34. Watch yourself. Take care of yourself. Be discerning. That is what it means. Have you watched yourself of late? No, you're just on a treadmill. Watch yourself. When you watch yourself, you will come to certain conclusion. When you watch yourself, you will draw back a bit. When you watch yourself, rather than you put that thing in gear six, no, you will put it on reverse. <laughs> watch yourself. Now, they're not saying watch somebody else. Watch yourself. 
because the battle is about you it's about your soul watch yourself of late I had to watch myself of recent I had to watch myself watching myself meaning I have to make decision that will impact the life of my children so if I have to go through fire to keep the destiny of my children to keep their life intact to keep their life on the track of the kingdom amen so be it I'm not going to allow my children or I, to go through what I went through to continue the same circle no Listen, you have to come to the place that when you continue to watch yourself, you begin to remove the dross. You begin to remove the selfishness. You begin to remove all right, your own self-security. No. When you live for yourself, then you have no essence for existence. That's the truth. When you live for yourself, you have lost the essence, the true essence of existence. The true essence of existence, amen, is to live for others. Jesus Christ came to show us how to live for others, how to live for the kingdom. My entire life has been about the kingdom. And I tell you, sometimes when, when you think about that, it can be overwhelming because you want to ask yourself, but God, when am I supposed to also have some, you know, all these good things about life? When you live for Christ, you've got to realize that you're a priest, you're a Levite. You know, the Levites, the Lord said something about the Levite. He says, I am your inheritance. <laughs> I thought, God, you're also going to give me a land. I mean, all the tribes got land. Give, give, give me some land too. I mean, I want to be able to show that, see what we have built. God says, no, the Levite, I am their inheritance. Is that enough for you? Is God, is Christ enough for you? That's a big question. Watch yourself. Be careful of yourself. Or else your heart will be weighed down by dissipation. Dissipation is somebody that has been intoxicated <laughs> somebody that has been you know uh, you know it's like somebody that has been that has been drugged while you're sleeping they just you know inject you with something you 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 woke up and you know you can't walk straight <laughs> you're falling here and there you see men walking like trees or seen trees walking like men You've lost this. You've lost your sight. You've lost, amen. Your 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 straightness. You can't walk in the straight and the narrow path again. Suddenly, you begin to question the values of God. You begin to question the demand of God. You begin to question. You understand the dealings of God in your life. You start challenging what God, amen. What in fact, what you used to love. Dissipation. That, amen, that you'll be weighed down by dissipation. Everybody around you seem to be getting promoted and seem to be prospering. But it, it's like you. You don't know if you're coming or going. <laughs> Suddenly you want to take laws into your name. In fact, you've taken laws into your hand. You know why? Because you've taken your eyes off Jesus. Watch yourself. Why? Because you live in a day where the word of God is coming to pass. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a word. That word is the prophetic intentions of God, the prophetic agendas of God. They are panning out. And when God's prophetic agenda is panning out, all right, it's a double-edged sword. In other words, it is both positive and negative. It is both positive and negative. The same God who caused his prophet to make declaration, by my word there shall be no rain or dew. The same God told him, you've got to relocate. <laughs> Elijah, you've got to go to the brook. Because if you live in this place, that family is going to meet you. You're not going to have food here. So I need you to go to the brook. Excuse me, who made the declaration? The same prophet. So don't think, all right, all right, that what is happening, what is happening right now, amen, particularly among believers globally, amen, is a manifestation of God's prophetic, amen, yes, agenda. There's no devil anywhere trying to kill you. The devil has no power to try to kill you. 
You know, people want to compare the devil with God. <laughs> Satan is not the opposite of God, and God is not the opposite of Satan. I hope you know that. Satan is a fallen angel. Let me repeat it again. Satan is just but a fallen angel. You want to compare, you compare Satan with Michael or Gabriel. That's a pair, but not God. <laughs> God lives in the realm that Satan cannot even dare to come. He will, he will. He <laughs> I don't even want to say he will die. I don't know what to, what to say. Are, are, you, are, you, are you getting it? So, we need to see this. Because until the Lord begins to open our understanding to see the magnitude of our Heavenly Father, to see His majesty, to see His beauty, we'll be afraid. We'll be afraid. The more you, you know this God that is your Father, the more you will enter rest. In fact, the more you will say, Lord, please deal, deal with me the more because you know is dealing hallelujah is your redemption hallelujah you know that the father's dealing if he, if god is giving you a hiding if he's hitting you he's disciplining you ah you will say give me more daddy please i want more because you know he's doing that in love there's no there's no hatred in him to want to destroy why would he want to destroy you after all he made you he created you in his own image and his own likeness if there are things in your life listen there are two things going on in our life in fact in my crisis i came to certain points one of the first point i came to is god is dealing with me or there are things in my life god wants me to deal with because of the mistake of my past any challenge you face in life boils down to these two things one god is dealing with you and in the dealings of god god deals with you from his sovereignty is the god who gives life and who can kill if he kills blessed be his holy name is god your human wisdom your 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 secular understanding what men call democracy you understand what what they call secularism will never be able to comprehend him who is man Yet he has revealed himself that he is not just he is not just one who, who has love. He is the definition, he is the very character nature of love. He is the agape himself. <laughs> you understand that? Just like they say he is the word. Secondly, there are things, mistakes we've made in life. And it's not that is not punishment. It's just the, the it's, it's just a principle. The seed a man sowed. There are seed we have sown, amen, that are bound to bring forth certain fruits. And when we are going through, amen, yes, th those things we need God's help to to know how to deal with them. This is the reason why they say all things work together, including the negative things. Not like he condoned them. No, no, no. But he will allow the fruit of that negative things, that you know, wrong seed, because you cannot so go over three and be expecting mango. There are mistakes we've made out of ignorance. There are laws. I hope you understand when we make mistakes, we put laws into motion. The same thing when we do good things. We put laws into motion. Every time we act, amen, we act, amen, in response to laws. So they say, well, <laughs> you put this thing into motion. You activated this law. So, well, we will give you grace. Go through it. And when you're going through it, you'll be, you'll be saying the devil. It's not the devil. There are laws you have set in motion because of ignorance, because of, in fact, because of certain things your parents did. That is why it would be foolish of anyone to see how certain things, all right, you know, have been activated in your family and you can see, you can see, you can see the cycle. And then you also, you've given your life to Jesus, you continue to do the same thing that will continue to feed and activate that cycle. No, it is your duty, amen, to put an edge, to put a wedge over that and say, you stop in me, you stop by me. It ends with me. Hallelujah. 
could be it could be divorce it could be you understand you know barrenness it could be you know lack of breakthrough you know it could be sickness it could be whatever that cycle is it is your responsibility as a child of god to say no you this thing there are things i put an end to in my life in my family i i i know them i know the price i paid i say it ends with me now you think oh then the devil brings another one he said you thought oh you missed okay we'll see how you're gonna dodge this one <laughs> You see why you need wisdom. You see why you need wisdom. Don't be fighting battle and think it's all about you. It's all about you. No, no. It's not about you. It's about the next generation. You hear what I said? It's about the next generation. If you can't receive what I'm saying today, it's fine. Put it on the shelf. When you wake up, amen. In two months' time, maybe in two years' time, you will realize that what I've said is the truth. That's why we don't we don't force truth on people. We say it the way it is. I rather go through pain now, so that my children will not have to go through it. It's not just about giving my children, you know, financial security. There are spiritual security you've got to give your children. There are things that your children should not go through. In, in when they grow up because you have you you've killed that spirit you've put an end to it and when you're doing that people will call you all kinds of names they would say you are you're foolish you're stupid you don't you are, you don't have wisdom well they are the one that don't have wisdom because they are looking at trend they are looking at you know material things they are looking at physical things you are looking at spiritual inheritance a child of God that does not understand the principle of spiritual inheritance, the principle of, you know, spiritual covenant. I mean, that person needs to go back to spiritual school. Nations. You understand? Nations. The, 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 the way nations are and the way nations behave, amen, can be traced down to how people understand the problems of their homes and their family. And this is why we think that the church should be, you know, the, the, the arrowhead to, to transform nation. No, no, but the church is just about happy clappy. We don't understand why God has positioned us in a city, you know, in a community, in a society. It's to break cycles. I hope you understand, cycle walks through systems. The walk through systems set in place by principalities. And you also just continue oh, with your eyes open. Put away your selfishness and your self centeredness and let God prevail. Watch yourself or your heart to be filled. Why would my heart be filled with dissipation, dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life? This is what is driving people into a state. Why are people worried about worries of life? Because of what other people will say. Because of the pressure. Watch yourself or your heart. They take care of yourself or your heart. Listen, he didn't say, you know, your job. He didn't say, no, they say your heart is about your heart. Your heart. Your soul. Will be weighed down. Of course, that's anxiety. Weighed down by dissipation and drunkenness. You know what happened to a drunk person. The moment a person gets a man intoxicated, gets drunk, you lose yourself. You lose a man, your sense of dignity. You lose your sense of pride. You lose your, your sense of worth. You say things you're not supposed to say. You behave, you know, like a beast. You lose a sense of, you know, self, self value. When you see people start losing the, you know, their sense of values because they are drunk. A drunker will fall on the street. A drunk, a drunk, when you give a drunk urine, the drunk will drink it. Doesn't know. Now we're talking about a man being drunk, a man, by, you know, satanic, demonic intoxications. 
be weighed down by desperation and drunkenness and the worries of life. Those are the things that, that weigh people down. The worries of life, the anxieties of life. The Bible says that the day will, will, what? will spring upon you suddenly. That the day will catch on you suddenly like a snare. When we take our eyes off Jesus, this is the state we'll find ourselves. That's the point I'm making. You'll be weighed down by dissipation, by drunkenness, and by the worries of life. The worries of life, you know, are captured in the in the crisis. Crisis everywhere. Crisis. No, they didn't call us to live outside, you know, crisis. They didn't call us amen, to be isolated from crisis. They say within the crisis, reveal Christ. Did you hear me? Within the crisis, showcase, display Christ. That is the gospel. That is what they are calling us to do in this season. That within the craziness, reveal earlier the sanity of God. Reveal the wisdom of God. You can't do that if you're doing what they're doing. If you're feeding on what they're feeding. If you're confessing what they're confessing. All right? If you're also declaring what they're declaring. All right? No, you cannot. Because it's garbage in, garbage out. You can't be feeding, amen, on human wisdom. You can't be complaining the way the world is complaining and suddenly you think you're going to display Christ. No, it's never going to happen. They're calling you and I in this season to unveil Christ within the human crisis. Why, why, why is the world fa fa facing crisis? Because we live in a fallen world, friends. And this is the whole essence why we've got to elevate and, and promote the gospel of redemption. This is not about people coming to your church or my church. This is giving people hope. Jesus is the hope, is the answer. Hallelujah. Is the secure place, is the anchor. Where your ship is not anchor on Christ, that ship, amen, like the Titanic will sink with all the treasure, with all the gifting, you will sink. You see what happened a few months ago? That ship, that you know, special, you know, a submarine that you know they built that they say, well, they've discovered where the Titanic is. They're gonna discover those people die there. <laughs> God is still speaking, still using the Titanic to speak to us. Die. These are handwriting on the wall. Can we read the times and the season? You cannot face the issues that is happening, that is panning out in our day, and you think you can survive it by your own ability, by your own little theological knowledge. You've got to have an experience. You must come to the mountain, to the hill of the Lord. You have to come with a clean hand, with a, with a, with a circumcised heart. Amen. We remember again Elijah and Elisha beginning from what? Well, Gilga. Gilga is a place where we begin this journey. You want to know the Lord. You want to see, hallelujah, the reality. You want to come into the ascended life. You want to see that chariot, amen, of fire that is going to take Elijah and you are going to continue the work of God on earth. You've got to begin in the place of circumcision. Circumcise your heart. You're well off with a circumcised heart than to have, you know, a self-righteousness. The reason why the Pharisee would not accept the Lord is because of their self-righteousness. Are you tracking? You've got to speak to yourself. You've got to clean the mirror. So you can see with clarity. You can see, yes, the wrinkles. You can see the blemish. It's coming. Amen. Amen. For a church without wrinkle, without spot, without blemish. That church is not some building, it's not some cathedral. That church is the condition of the heart of men. The church Christ is building is within the hearts of men. 
It's within the hearts of men that the values, amen, of the kingdom, amen, are enshrined. It's within the heart of men, amen, that the, that the character, the structure, the system, amen, that will change society, hallelujah, yes, will come out. Out of the heart, proceed. There's a battle for your soul and my soul, and the battle for the soul, amen, of our family, of our home, of our nation. But if your heart does not align with that of Christ, if your vision does not log into that of Christ, if you're not seeing Christ, and all you're seeing is crisis, all you're seeing is trouble, all you're seeing is your woe, all you're seeing is your fear, all you're seeing is lack, all you're seeing and you're confessing that remember what you see is what you're going to confess. <laughs> it's impossible, amen, to confess what you have not seen. Son of man, what do you see? Your, your, your sight defines, amen, your proclamations, your declaration, the prophetic, hallelujah, yes, majors on the quality of the sight. Because we live in the prophetic season, we have to calibrate, we have to work on the, the quality, the position of our sight. You can see and not see correctly. You can see and be seen partially. You see men walking like trees. They had to pray, lay hands on that man again. They say, now I see all things well. Hallelujah. When you begin to see well, you will have what we call, amen, heavenly perspective in dealing with earthly matters. I hope you understand the reason why, amen, heaven is, heaven is investing so much in our life in this season. It's not for us to go to heaven and just hallelujah, praise God. No, it's for us to have the right tool, the right philosophy, the right mindset in dealing with the issues of the world so that creation can be redeemed. All those revelations they're given to us. It's not for us, amen, one day to be able to go to heaven. No, it's for walk here on earth. A new earth he wants to create. A new earth begins with a new mindset, a new belief system, a new operating system. Somebody listening. Thank you, Father. Are you tracking? Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Okay, where are we? Thank you, Jesus. All right. Um, all right. Let me let me share one or two more scripture, then I'm done. Talk about the sight of Eli. The Bible said at that time, Eli, whose eyesight had grown so dim. That he could no longer see. Yet he was lying in the room. He was within the temple. He was within the house of God. But he has lost his sight. What good. Amen. Is a person in the house of God. But you cannot see the things of God. You see. Because, because, he has, because Eli has lost his sight. He has also lost his ability to lead. You see, what you see, what you're seeing in this season is going to determine the quality of your worship. Have you seen the way people are playing with God these days? Have you even seen the way we are playing with the things of God? We're playing with the word of God. We're playing with spiritual things. We're like children now, all right? You know, playing, you know, you know, you know, dancing in the marketplace while there are all kinds of trade going on over our head. We're just dancing, you know, you know, like children. Who, who have no sense of care, who have no sense of value, who have no sense of presence, who have no sign, sense of times and season. The Lord said they are like children playing in the marketplace. That's what happens when we lose sight of the things of God, the what, the values of God. You know, things that, you know, that you will respond to immediately at once as you hear this thing connected to the Spirit. Ah, uh, something else have overwhelmed your heart you, you no longer respond you, you no longer connect to the things of God we try to whine you and whine you and whine you and whine you, you, know, you know. no 
that's 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 those are signs that you're in a state this is eli i am i almost found myself in a state of eli i had to cry out to god blood <laughs> have mercy on me help me because people will know <laughs> But you see, you have to be tracking God in the spirit of truth and honesty. Your heart is no longer glad when they say, come, let us go to the house of God. <clears throat> You're no longer seeking, hallelujah, to be at the gate of Jerusalem. You're not passionate about the things of God. You prefer worldly things. Now you dance to worldly music. You love to be entertained by worldly standard. Worldly things have captured your heart and your mind. Ah, you've taken your eyes off Jesus. You see, the enemy is never in a hurry to strike. And when he strikes, he always strikes systematically. The devil is very meticulous in the way he strikes. The enemy strikes like a scorpion. <laughs> It's amazing that I found a scorpion in my office. I mean, God is just speaking to me left, right, and center. How do you find a scorpion in your office where the day before you clean the entire office? Well, of course, I understand that that is just a prophetic metaphor. I have the blood of Jesus in my vein. There's no scorpion that can strike me. And die, you know, of, of, of a bite. No. Bible says we will tread upon, you know, serpent and scorpion. We live in a day where we have to be awakened. We have to be sensitive. Our sight. Remember when I talk about sight, I'm talking about your sense of discernment, your sense of understanding, your sense of, amen, being present regarding the things of the spirit. You hear the word of God. You're no longer moved. You're no longer steered. You're no longer passionate. But when you hear all this ungodly, uh, yeah, yeah, you, your heart just, just moves there. Ah, watch yourself. Dissipation. Drunkenness. The worries of life. We have to bring perspective and give people you know, perspective. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight? The Bible says the eyes is what? Is the light of your body. When your eye amen, has a defect, your entire body is filled with darkness. In other words, you're a potential accident because you have no sense of direction again. Your eyes have been taken off Jesus. The more you gaze at Jesus, amen, the more the qualities and the character values, amen, of the kingdom of God, which, which supposed to be the operating system of your life, becomes even more functional. That's what I'm talking about. Becomes more functional. While you are sleeping, you are picking signals. You're picking things. Who goes there? What's going on there? You're sleeping, your, sl your spirit is never asleep. Yeah, when we say, I'm tired, most time, watch it when you're tired. Most of the tiredness of today, amen, a spiritual attack. That's why when people sleep, they sleep like log of wood. They're no longer aware of their environment. Beyond just, you know, you know, bandits breaking into their home, all kinds of foreign, strange spirit also comes, uh, you know, and, and entertain themselves around their house. And you're not aware of it. Have you noticed that when you are in the spirit, you are a prayerful person. When you, when you sleep, you feel very light. You are very conscious. It's like you can hear of what is going on around you. Yes, because your spirit, amen, don't sleep. Your spirit is awake. But when you, you sleep and it's like <laughs> you are dead, ah, you have problem. And then you wake up in the morning, you feel very tired as if somebody has beaten you through the night. You know that you're under an attack. What you do, you don't need more sleep. You need, you need to go into times of prayer and fasting. 
The devil just said, you need to go into times of prayer and fasting. Fasting does one thing. Fasting, all right, awakens your spirit. Prayer keeps you alive and alert in regards to what the Lord wants to do in times of fast. So don't just say, well, I'm praying alone. If you have gotten to this point that I'm talking about, you have to also include fasting. And I will, I, will, I will recommend not those kind of nonsense fasting they'll tell you they're doing here. You're fasting, but you're eating. You're eating. You're, you say, well, I'm fasting. I'm, I'm doing Daniel's fast. Please, don't fool yourself. If you want to fast, fast. Six to six. Or go dry for one day. Don't take anything. Don't eat anything. Awaken your spirit. Oh, I know your body will be crying. You'll be having headache. You don't doubt it. <laughs> this is warfare. You understand this? This is warfare, warfare. Why do you think every year we do 21 days? We do all of that. We want to be at breast. We want to be amen, on the cutting edge of what the Spirit of God is doing. Don't want your eyes to grow dim. Not only did amen, this man, Eli, Eli's eyes grown dim. He had also grown fat to the point that he was so fat that when he heard that the ark of God was captured, the Bible says he fell backwards and broke his neck and died. You know why he broke his neck? His neck because he cannot repent. He can't turn. Your neck is symbolic, amen, of turning, repentance. He fell backwards, broke his neck. Why do you think Bible gave us all? See, he was lying in his room before the Lamb of God had gone out. The Lamb of God was not supposed to go out. The Bible says that the light ought to be burning day and night. The oil was never to go out. Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was located. Then the Lord called Samuel. Be afraid when God begin to bypass you. And they're looking for the next generation. They're looking for somebody you 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 are calling, you know, your your proje protege, uh, this young boy, this this boy. I mean, this what does this one know? He knows nothing. And heaven is speaking to the boy, speaking to that person. But they are they're bypassing you. You are in trouble. You are in big trouble. In fact, you have more trouble if you cannot see that that itself is a trouble. <laughs> That's why I see some fathers today, they're getting angry the way God is using some young people. And they're trying to, you know, castigate them. All these young people. I heard one man of God from Ghana who, who you know, in his day, he was, he, was, he, was, he was a father, highly respected. In fact, this man, I learned how to pray. The, the way I used to pray, God, the grace that I believe God gave to me, all right, in terms of prayer. I believe that I took some of it from this man from Ghana. This man, oh my word, when you hear him pray, everywhere shakes. But when they grow too big and become too fat and begin to lose their sight, they become glorified cer ceremonial apostles. <laughs> Not tracking God. They want to build big and build, be, be, build big auditorium and live large. You watch this man's candle start dying. You watch his lamb start dying. Heard him castigating young, young, young people God is using in our day. He <laughs> will castigate them <laughs> till your dying days because God is not. The, the Samuels are rising. You know why? Because their eyes are sharp. They may not be mature, fully mature, but God is working on them. I mean, there are certain things I don't want. I keep asking the Lord, don't give me. I just need enough to sustain the work you're giving to me and to, to be able to sustain my, my home, my family, my children. And to be a blessing, you know. But don't give me things that would, that would distract me from the cutting edge of what you have assigned me. I never want to be in a place where I can no longer give the word of God. If I need to rebuke, I need to rebuke. If I need to correct, I need to correct. If I need, amen, to say, hey, shut up and sit down and listen. I want to be able to do that without thinking. Oh, well, if I said that, uh, uh, <laughs> where is my meal coming from? No, man is not my source. 
the people God is using today to be a blessing to me. You understand? God can decide tomorrow, he shut them, he shut thy well and raise another well. So that you don't put your hope and trust in a man. Particularly if you are on a cutting edge of what God is doing. God is no man. He's no, he's no respecter of man. We need prophets who can be on the cutting edge of God's intention nowadays. Who can speak to us. Who can give us thus said the Lord without compromising. Not prophets who want to use the gift to build something for themselves. I have nothing to build for myself. All that I've built, I was willing to let it go. To maintain the values of Yahweh. Because if God can use you to do something, He can use you again to do it. Again. And again. And again. But don't, don't ever put your trust in anything. Don't ever put your trust in anyone. Never you put a trust in a gift. Not even the gift God has given to you. Don't be a user of the things of God. And that day God will say, depart from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. But God, but we, see, see all the things we did in your name. See, see, no. You have lost your sight. You saw something else. You saw kind of wisdom from what I forbid you not to eat. When she saw the fruit, she said, this is a fruit to make one wise. If you were stupid, you, you were foolish, you missed it big time. Adam should have given her a good hiding and said, my, my wife, no, 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 no. <laughs> He's been assimilated. God help us. <laughs> He's been assimilated. <laughs> you think it's today that the issue of who, who is the leader in the home uh, began? It started in the garden. Where was Adam? When Satan was having conversation with the wife, he was there. <laughs> I'm sure... Adam must have been playing American gospel in the garden. Because that's that's an American lifestyle culture. You understand? No, no. She's got a liberty to speak. No, no. Let her speak for herself. No, no, no. No. Hey, who is in charge here? <laughs> Don't mind me. But this is the truth. I will have shaken and say, hey, woman, sh hey, be quiet. Let me take it from here. Satan, get thee behind us. Out. Mm, be gone. Alele, go. There's an injunction. Ah, she looked at it. What wisdom was she looking for? From sight, they went into blindness. But they could see everything. But they have been shot from seeing the things of the spirit. God help you. Never get to the place where you are, where you are able to see everything around you. Hey, but you can't see the things of God again. You can't hear the voice of God again. But you are so aware of everything going on. Around the world. But when last did you hear God? When last did God spoke to you? When last did heaven told you about, you know, their engagement in, 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 uh, 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 in Mongolia? When last did they tell you, did they inform you about what they're about to do in China? When last did they tell you about their activity? Yes, that, that is about to, yes, uh, begin in Congo. When last did they tell you about the change that is going to take place in regions of the earth? That time Eli, whose eyes had grown dim, so dim, they could not see. God help us. We will not get to the point in the day where 
we can no longer see and all we can do is just to lie down in the room it's time to get up it's time to get up and trim hallelujah the wick so that the lamp the lamp of god can continue to burn libra namasanda baya handa rabba baya father we honor your name we honor you we want to continue to see jesus we want to continue to see jesus We want to see Jesus. The Greeks came. They said we want to see Jesus. We want to see Jesus. This is the direction of the Spirit in this new day. Look unto me, all ye ends of the earth. Look unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of your faith. If you want to find Christ... Within the mess, you may not find him. But if you look deep into your heart, you will notice he's still there. And he's calling you. In the midst of the shaking, he's calling you. Don't be afraid. Come. Come. It's going to take more than priority to leave others behind. I want to reach out to him. What makes Peter a leader is the fact that he didn't listen to the voice of others. He left them behind the boat. He stepped out. And when God sees the right attitude in us, he will encourage us. He will perfect us. He will mature us. Remember, God does not call perfect people. He calls people who have the right attitude and then he perfects them. That's why David is very special to him. David was not the most righteous person, but David had a heart like a child. <laughs> He's quick to fall on God. He's quick to fall on the rock. He's quick to run after him. David understood what it means to love God and that's all they are requiring of us in this season that's what it takes to build a kingdom and to maintain the reality of that kingdom in a world that hates the things of God we are not of this world the scripture says say father I pray don't take them out of the world no, it's, not, it's not the time to escape well, no no nobody is seeking escape we just want the light to shine brighter. So that in the midst of darkness, they can see that light and run to us. So we can show them Christ. Come on, bless the Lord. Isn't that a wonderful way to go to bed tonight if you're living in this part of the world? <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ, may you be magnified in us and through our life. We turn our hearts again to you. We repent for the fact that we have left you behind. We have stopped seeing you. We have stopped hearing you. We want to now begin to do everything that will draw us nearer to you. Whatever we do, we want to be focused on what pleases you. On what satisfies you. On what honors you. We want to hear the sound of your spirit. We want to hear the joyful, now, joyful noise of your spirit. We turn our hearts to you, Lord. We don't want our heart to be filled with anxiety and dissipation and drunkenness. So we guard our heart. We watch ourselves. We turn to you. We look unto you, our hope, our anchor. grace us. There is nothing that we can ever desire in this world that can be compared with how we long for you, how we desire you. All of the things of this world, they are but 
a rubble, a fading shadow they are, a passing shadow they are. You are our joy, you are our light, you are the hope of Israel. You are the hope of the nations. Creation longs for you. And we want to be able to truly, precisely represent you as the cry of redemption reaches you. Spirit of God, we lay down our life. We offer ourselves once again unto you as a living sacrifice. Have mercy on us. Wash us, cleanse us, purify our hearts. May we once again pulsate after you. May our heart, O oh God, beat along for you as the deer pants for the water. We long for you. We seek you. We desire you. <clears throat> May we not forget what it means, O oh God, <clears throat> to live a life that honor you. May in everything we do, we seek you first. Christ, our King, may we live for the glory of your kingship, of your dominion. Dominion to us is that you rule over us. <laughs> dominion to us is that you rule, you reign over us. Because it's in that light that we can represent your government to the world lest we go out and dominate things that would dominate us so father walk in us don't leave us the way we are continue to do your work in us you said that except the hair as pass the training of the tutors is no better than a slave. How we see our life manifesting slavery mentality. Even though you've called us to be prince and princess. Because we have not graduated. So, may you continue your process. We allow you to continue your dealings. We surrender. We yield ourselves. So that you can say, henceforth I call you no more. Servant, but friends. Hallelujah. This is the prayer we want to enter. That we be no more servants, but friends. Because friends don't have secrets. Oh, Jesus, bring us to your chamber. Show us your love again. That we may know how to respond to the world that we live in. The crisis of our day. We know one thing. Because we live in you and move in you. And have our being in you. We can see tomorrow. The song says, because he leaves, I can face tomorrow because Jesus lives I'm not afraid of tomorrow hallelujah fear is gone the fear of death the fear of rejection is gone the fear of lack is gone because you are more than enough you are our great shepherd thank you Oh Lord, I thank you for the life of my brethren. May you shower them once again with your love. May you breathe on them again. May you show them how much you care for them. May they never forget that their life is configured to represent you. Even just by their breath, that wherever they go, help them to remember that they are Christ ambassador. Yes. A body you have prepared for us. 
May they remember that their body is your house. May I remember that my body is your temple. So you will do as you will, as you desire. It was Paul who said that henceforth, we who live should no longer live for ourselves. That when we live, we must live as one who live through faith. The faith of him who loved us and died for us. Christ our master. Christ our king. Christ before us. Christ behind us. Christ above us. Christ beneath us. That everywhere we go, we see Jesus. We magnify him. We reflect him. May your kingdom come. Today and tomorrow. And the next day. In the next week. In the next month. May your kingdom continue to make inroad into every area of our life. May there never be a part of our life where our idea or will or desire overrides your intention. We surrender our life. We surrender ourselves. Reign, Jesus. It is when you reign in your church, you are able to reign through your church. Reign in us. Reign in me. Reign in the life of my disciples. Reign in the life of my co-sojourners. Reign in the life of my tribe. Reign in the life of my brothers and my sisters. Those who are covenanted with me. Who have joined, yes, their faith with that of mine. That as I pass through my time of trial. That they will learn something deeper and see something deeper. See the transparency of truth and leadership. And they will come out far better than me, oh God. That's my prayer. And everyone you've connected to me, that they will be far better than me. It's my prayer for them. That all that you have given unto me, I release it into, into their lives. Thank you, Father. That no one will be lame among us. That we will continue to strengthen our feeble knees. That we will rise and journey to that place of your glory. Yes. That in this place called Mountain of Transfiguration, that we will see you. We will hear you. And we will interact with the prophetic council of heaven. Elijah and Moses. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you, Father. Thank you for healing that has taken place through the auspice of your word. Thank you for deliverance that is taking place through the ministry of your word. Thank you, Lord, that as your word grows in the life of your people, yes, your kingdom, your will and purposes is prevailing over every area of their life. Oh, hallelujah. We glorify you, Lamb of God. We sow the seed of tonight as we watch. <laughs> we thank you. The Lord, your spirit will continue to watch over us. May we remind ourselves once again that we are watchmen. It's not a masculine title. It's an emblem of everyone, both male and female. Apprehended by the spirit, positioned at the gate of your prophetic counsel over cities. Thank you that we are priest unto you. Our life bring honor. Oh, hallelujah. We will not be deadened down into the natural realm. No, we are people of the spirit. We rise in the spirit. We track your voice in the spirit. We are able to respond. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the blessings of the Lord continue to rest upon you. May he guide you. May he lead you. May he strengthen you. May he fortify you with wisdom. May knowledge guide your path. May you be strengthened in your inner man. May the goodness of God continue to pass you by and lead you on 
to the place of divine intention. Amen. Well, friends, thank you very much. Wow. I thank God for this time of interaction with the Spirit. I want to believe God's word has made landfall inroad into your life. Rise. Continue to walk towards Jesus because he's calling you. Keep well, keep strong, friends. Thank you for being part of this, you know, time. I mean, it's the 12th hour. I wasn't planning to, you know, to, to stay this long. But we bless the Lord. Amen. We just bless the Lord. Our desire is to unveil Christ within the human crisis. Our desire is to remain as a powerful prophetic voice to our generation. So thank you, everyone. Have yourself a blessed night. Thank you, everyone that has joined us tonight. Thank you, Sister Priscilla. I really appreciate it. God bless you. God bless you, too. Thank you for all your comments. Sister Priscilla, Sister Nkumisa. Thank you. God bless everyone. I see somebody else. Another Priscilla. Oh, okay, it's, it's the same Sister Pr Priscilla. All right. God bless you. Okay. Every one of you, those watching us from YouTube, God bless you. Enjoy the, ne the, the, the night. I'll see you again. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs>